Once you know how easy it can be to damage the world, you stop being amazed by what you can do to it. A child starts a fire and stares into the flame. The troops are marched onto the beach and told to look away. It's all the same. Explosions are showy. Martyrdom a diva's frustrated farewell. The wonder is the world keeps going. The miracle is that it isn't already destroyed. There were people who worked on the bomb for whom the Trinity test was an absolute letdown. Some thought the chain reaction wouldn't stop, that the whole sky would catch fire. But it didn't, of course. It was a bomb, a bang, a boom, a big, beautiful boom, yes, maybe, exploding in colours that can barely be described, making bones visible through soldiers' closed eyes, but still, just an explosion, a hurled firework, a child's flame in the grass. I'm trying not to talk about the bomb, but the bomb is our Faustian shorthand our idea of a dangerous idea, of the destruction of the big encoded in the small. When you truly understand how much can be done with so little, even the idea of the bomb is too much sizzle. Even Muhammad Atta's box cutter seems diminished by the gaudy use he put it to. I have books in my library from the 90s which talk about planes crashing into buildings. Fire, and the faces we see in it, have been with us since forever. It was nothing new except in terms of scale. Jet fuel warping steel beams till their centres couldn't hold. Heavy metal meltdown. We've always loved a light show. So try this for size. A woman staying in a mansion with two poets tells a story. At their request she writes it up. And her idea touches the minds of people who will never read the Revolt of Islam or Don Juan, creates a solecism so universal that its ironised reversal becomes a soppy truism, an image and a prefix which hurt no less for being a cliché when you're the one they're used to wound, when it's your body being likened to a patchwork made of corpses, or a virus, or the bomb, or consider a more modish idea. Stochastic terrorism. Words spoken to a webcam or a microphone or written in the pages of a paper which are intended to inspire non-linear atrocity. No direct instruction given. No official targets named. No paper trail beyond the words the killer quotes in his manifesto or paints on the side of his gun, which can, of course, be disavowed when traced back to their author. A cute racket, if you lack the guts to get your knuckles in the meat. But not the cutest. After all, somebody needs to hear it. But you can scar the world with less than fire. With words no human ear will ever hear. Well, not words exactly. There are languages which are not speech, but something beyond and before it. And if you can learn to shape things in these languages, then you can call them out in empty rooms and watch the carnage on the tube. And the very worst of it is, it is easy. You can almost do it without thinking. In fact, that's when it's most easily done. When you lose even yourself in the scream and something electric and old shakes itself free of your mouth and the place in the back of the back of your mind. And you only realise later what you did. And what it cost you. The lucky ones, I think, are those with access to a gun and a steady enough arm to get the shot right. Or the ones who luck out in the painkiller lottery or can stand the ordeal of checking out fast, mixing bleach and ammonia. The unlucky ones have to live with it, 
trying to trap our thoughts in cages made of chemicals or music, wincing when cheap sci-fi authors turn a glimpse of what we've seen into a Hugo or a movie franchise, reminding us of why we stick to literary fiction. It's less real. <laughs>